Call 1-888-FARMERS to switch and you could save an average of $470 on your auto insurance. That's a lot of money in just a few minutes. With savings like that, you could be lounging on an impractical amount of ornate and overpriced throw pillows you bought for your couch. But you won't because you're better with money than that. That's why you're calling us in the first place. Call 1-888-FARMERS to get a quote today. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data July to December 2020. Underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance Exchanges or Affiliate. Products not available in every state. There once was a dad who set out on a great quest to find the perfect Coke flavors at his family's request. So he went into a local store and grabbed the Coke Cherry Vanilla, Coke Cherry, and more. At dinner, they sipped Coke flavors and rejoiced for everyone made their own delicious choice. Coca-Cola flavors, unbelievably delicious. With so many delicious Coca-Cola flavors and Coca-Cola Zero Sugar flavors options to choose from, you'll have to taste them all. Pick some up at El Super today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 402. We've been waiting for a new batch of documents to be unsealed by Judge Preska, and it looks like right about on time that we'll be getting this next batch. It seems like the process is going to take roughly two months or so between each drop, and now we see Preska sticking to that schedule and announcing that the second drop, or the next drop I should say, will take place next Tuesday. Now, there's going to be some of the uh, the documents that are going to stay, uh, stay sealed, and those documents will be ones that have to do with consensual relations had by Ghislaine Maxwell and obviously redacted names in this paperwork. So, we can expect another I would say a few hundred pages probably. And again, I would caution anyone to think that there's going to be huge bombshells in here because I highly doubt that's going to be the case. But what I do think, like with the other drops, is that it will provide some more context, fill in some holes, and it will add just a little bit more meat to the bone, right? And when, when you're talking about a case like this, I think that's one of the most important things to keep in mind, the context of everything. Because things on their own seem almost impossible or like something that is made up. But when you put it all together in the context of the story, you see how all the pieces fit together. And you see how this criminal enterprise was conducted throughout the years. So that's why it's so important to have these dumps and because it shows that the federal government is interested in some transparency as well because we know that there is a lack of that. We know there needs to be more transparency from the federal government, most certainly here in the United States. So anytime there's transparency from the courts or from the government itself, I think that's a fantastic thing. And with the, uh, Judge Preska unsealing these documents, it's only a step in the right direction. Now, do I wish everything was not redacted? For sure. But I do understand why certain things would be redacted in the interest of privacy. Now, we all want to know every single thing, of course. But we have to remember that we have to respect the rule of law, right? And there are certain uh, constitutional rights that need to be protected. And it's important that we recognize that stuff and we, you know, the government does things the right way. Because one of the major reasons, for me anyway, that I got involved in all of this was that the government was always cheating. So they don't need to cheat here. There's plenty of evidence. And they need to just get themselves a proper conviction with good old fashion police work. And so far, with Ghislaine Maxwell here and since her arrest, it certainly seems like that is what's occurring. Can we get the old uh, okey-doke pulled on us? Of course we can. It's the federal government we're dealing with here. We're talking about some of the smarmiest SOBs going. Some uh, some, Some of the people who embody the whole entire outlook of 
of, of it being worth what it costs. These are the kind of people that they think that if the, the gain is worth it, then it's okay to displace millions of people. It's okay to drop bombs on places like Yemen. If the means justifies the end, then it's okay to them. That's how they, that's how they roll. That's how they function. And these are the very same people that were rolling with Epstein and protecting him. So, it's a good thing, for sure, that we're getting some transparency, but I definitely would like to see even more. And not when it comes to constitutional issues, but when we're talking about, like, the, uh, the grand jury stuff from the, uh, the original case that is still being... Um, redacted and classified and sealed, all of that stuff should be made public. That stuff is very important to the case, and it grants great context to everything that's going on. So I would love to see that stuff be uh, unsealed and released into the public. I mean, I think that would provide so much insight. So hopefully with Judge Preska setting precedent here of unsealing these documents, that we see this start to happen more and more, not only in this case, but in other high-profile cases as well. All right, so let's jump into the article. Um, Tonight, our article is from the Miami Herald, and the authors are Kevin G. Hall and Ben Wider. Headline, Judge orders release of more Ghislaine Maxwell records minus salacious details. And I think people will be able to fill in the blanks with the salacious details portion, right? Same like with um, when it was the, the names were redacted last time, how uh, they went through and pieced it together, who the redactions were, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of you out there that are going to dive in and try and figure out these unredacted names. So next Tuesday, I hope you all have your schedules cleared and you're ready to do some sleuthing. A federal judge on Tuesday ordered the unsealing and release of dozens of documents in a now-settled civil suit involving Ghislaine Maxwell, the jailed and accused co-conspirator of the sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, but afforded the longtime Epstein associate a measure of privacy by ruling that salacious portions of testimony about her sex life will remain private. And again, I want everything to be blown out, right? I want the doors blown open and everything to be unsealed and unredacted. But I get it. If it has nothing to do with the conversation and the lawyers have gotten together and the prosecutors have gotten together and the judge has made the ruling, then, you know, I I get it, right? Uh, I might not want it to be the case of there being these redactions, but I certainly understand why there would be these kind of redactions, right? Because they really can't, we don't want them to set some sort of uh, a bad precedent here and then that precedent is used later on for some weird-ass government overreach, right? So again, I want the government to play by the rules and I think that within the rules of the playing field that there is plenty for them to smash Maxwell with and on. The Tuesday hearing presided over Judge Loretta A. Preska involved the release of documents in a settled lawsuit between Maxwell and Epstein accuser Virginia Roberts, something sought by the Miami Herald, and the biggest point of contention was a July 2016 deposition by Maxwell. That deposition was forced on her after she was deemed unresponsive when she sat before Robert's lawyers in an April 2016 deposition. Much of that grilling had to do with her sexual behavior and that of Epstein. So again, I am sure that there are all sorts of intimate moments talked about within the deposition. And I think that it's important for context that we know just exactly what she said to 
the investigators to the lawyers during these depositions. So it's it's super um super important to the story in general, I think, that this stuff is being unredacted and unreleased. So I'm looking forward to seeing what is provided and what is um released to the public. But again, I would caution anybody to get uh, too excited thinking there's going to be some bombshells. M- there might be, right? But again, you know how I feel about that. I always like to tamper down the excitement because a lot of this stuff we know. What this does is a- it adds context. It adds some receipts. And it certainly shows a little bit more behind the curtain into what Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein were up to. Preska acknowledged that the public thirst for details about Maxwell might go unsatiated, but determined that Maxwell's sex life was adult consensual behavior and should remain her private business. The judge gave all parties until January 27th, absent an appeal by Maxwell's lawyers over the redacted portions to unseal and make public uh, a number of new documents. So, again, there's going to be... I know that people aren't going to be too happy with the fact that there's going to be a bunch of redactions, and certainly I'm not either. But I do understand, again, I want to reiterate, I understand why there are those sort of redactions when it comes to consensual behavior in private in private business you know what i always say right and i'm i'm staunch about this i don't you see my don't, my beliefs don't just blow with the wind or come when it's convenient to me my beliefs are what they are and i'm pretty stubborn about that it takes a lot of evidence to knock me off of a belief And I truly believe what people do in their bedrooms is their business. As long as it's between two consenting adults, I believe that it's their business. If you want to engage in a love affair with someone of the same sex or three people of different sexes, I don't care. It is not my business. So I, you know, I get the whole consensual behavior uh, portion here and perhaps maybe, you know, considering how I feel about consensual behavior behind closed doors and how it's such a slippery slope, I understand what where Preska's going with this. Again, I wish it was all unredacted, right? I want to know all the names, too. I want to know who she was talking about. But I'm pretty sure that when we go through it and we start taking a look, we're going to be able to make heads out of tails, and 2 plus 2 is still going to equal 4, folks, right? The documents include the names and testimony of people who until now have been known as Doe 1 and Doe 2, individuals who have talked about their testimony and do not object to it being made public. Also being made public are all references and documents to Alan Dershowitz, Mr. I Kept My Underpants On, the legend of the naked volleyball game, and celebrity lawyer who represented Epstein and with whom Roberts alleges she was forced by Epstein and Maxwell to have sex. Dirty Dershowitz, Mr. I Kept My Underpants On, strongly denies the allegations and also has dueling defamation suits with Roberts. Because, you know, he's such a pleasant man, such a nice man. If you joined the live stream on Sunday, I talked a little bit more about, uh, Dershy Dersh over here and about his unhinged behavior and how he's an absolute embarrassment for anyone to be involved with him. So I, you know, Dersh getting uh, aired out is fantastic news. Everything that has, that he has to do with this case should be aired out. Anything with his name on it, any kind of signature, any sort of plea deal, any sort of behind the scenes wrangling that occurred by Mr. I kept my underpants on, should be made made public. I don't want to hear about no redactions there. I don't want to hear shit. The guy's embroiled right in the middle of it. So let's get that information out there. Let's hear it. Let's see it. And let's, let's really see what you were up to there, Dirty Dersh. You sure got a lot of whinging going on. You sure do have a whole lot of belly aching. But you know what you really haven't provided? You haven't provided any receipts. Just a narrative. The judge held several other does, people who gave testimony, 
but may not but may not want it to be made public would remain under seal or redacted from the documents being released until their individual determinations are made. A deadline of January 29th was set for objections to to the unsealing of a new batch of documents, all of which are being subjected to possible release when Preska ruled over the summer in favor of a public records lawsuit by the Miami Herald. So, we expected this. She's talked about the redactions from the very beginning and how that these sealed documents would be sent to both teams for them to take a look to make their um, suggestions about what should be redacted and then ultimately it would be Preska to make the decision on what would be released and what wouldn't be released. So this is certainly not a shock to me. I knew this was coming. I knew there would be some redactions coming. And um, again... I guess we'll find out when the when the documents are released what exactly is redacted and just how much of this stuff is going to meet the black pen of death. The virtual court hearing was interrupted briefly when Preska notified that a listener was broadcasting the proceedings live to YouTube, something prohibited. We have had enough of a lack of rule of law around here. Let's try to observe it, Preska said warning that the person could be identified and charged if it didn't stop. So I guess a whole bunch of QAnon folks decided it would be a good idea to try and disrupt this hearing. Like, that's a fantastic move. Like, a great uh, uh, option out of the playbook. For a bunch of people that act like they care about human trafficking and the suffering of children, they sure don't act like it. Grow up. That's all I could possibly say. Grow up, all right? Trump gave his concession speech. There is no trust the plan. There is none of that stuff, folks. So just, you, you, you're you going to have to come to terms with the fact that you were gaslit. You're going to have to come to terms with the fact that you were lied to. The same way I had to go through it myself. After George Bush and his band of cretins completely played on my emotions in the wake of 9-11 and dog-walked us into the war. You have been lied to. And all of these content creators out there that were pumping this QAnon shit like they had some behind-the-scenes information, like they were in the know, I hope that all of them have an absolute abandonment of followers. I would never, ever, ever spend my most quality quality commodity, which is my life minutes, with people who have lied to me for four years about trust the plan, where we go one, we go all. Ludicrous nonsense. Absolutely ludicrous, okay? So, here's an idea. Why don't you focus on other things and leave this Jeffrey Epstein case alone? Because all you're doing is causing problems, okay? Okay? And it is not welcomed. It's not going to be met without me absolutely abusing the nonsensical morons who engage in this behavior on the podcast. And frankly, it's just a bad look. So my my advice to everybody who is feeling like They've been lied to by these these grifters, these content creators that told you a story for four years that even Alex Jones said was a bunch of nonsense. Imagine, even Alex Jones thought Q was a bunch of BS. And now, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I, I don't, you know, I understand why people would fall for something like that. People want to feed that confirmation bias. So I don't think that the all of the people who, you know, wanted to believe that are bad people by any stretch of the imagination. But if you're one of these people that are calling in and trying to disrupt this hearing, check yourself, give your head a a good shake, and ask yourself where your priorities are. If you really cared about what was going on, and you truly wanted to make things work, you'd be focusing on the midterm elections and trying to get good quality candidates elected, instead of LARPing and running around telling me that Tom Hanks was arrested, and he's in Gitmo, and there's the military has Nancy Pelosi's laptop, and all this other weird, wacky bullshit. As if the world isn't crazy enough. As if there isn't enough fantasy going on around us. You have to engage in this nonsense? 
And I'm sorry about digressing here, but them calling into this this hearing is just it's it's ridiculous to me. It makes me agitated and it makes things even harder. Quit trying to muddy the waters, okay? The fight over the unsealing of Maxwell's depositions in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York took on greater significance after she was charged last summer with four counts of sexual trafficking of a minor and two counts of perjury related to statements she made in each of the two depositions. Maxwell's legal team has argued unsuccessfully that the federal prosecutors obtained the two depositions in violation of a protective order barring release of materials from the civil suit. So they try to say that the prosecutors pilfered this information from another ongoing lawsuit and they shouldn't have had access to it in the first place. Meanwhile, that was proven untrue. And again, Maxwell and her legal team took a big fat L. They should be used to that by now, right? All of the L's these people take. It's like being the New York Jets, all of these L's. Maxwell remains in federal custody as she awaits trial, which is scheduled for July, after she was denied bail last summer over concerns that she would be a flight risk. Her lawyers filed a renewed plea for Maxwell to be released on bail in December, secured by a $28.5 million pledge of money and property from Maxwell and close friends and family. Her request was denied in late December and Maxwell's lawyers subsequently indicated that they are considering whether to request her release on bail a third time. So that's where we're at, folks, right now. We're rocking and rolling, moving along. These documents are going to be released. They're going to be dumped. Um, You know, we're going to find out pretty soon when. And uh, we'll see, right? We'll see what they contain. Again, I, I, I don't foresee any bombshells. I don't foresee anything that's going to shake the earth. But I do think it will provide a lot of context and give us a blueprint to go and look over and, you know, cross-reference some things that we think we know and try and, you know, build a, an idea of how much of this circumstantial evidence is much more than just circumstantial. So... We will keep on it. We will wait and see what Preska has in store. And as soon as there's a decision and there's a date, you better believe I'll be pouring over all of the documents, reading through them, and then I'll be popping on right here on the podcast to discuss it with all of you. So until then, folks, we'll just have to wait and see what comes down the pipe and comes our way. But I'm guessing that we're going to have a relatively... Busy week in news. I, a few articles at the very least from the, the first few days, it would seem that way. And usually that's the way it goes. A little bit of a lull and then bam, a whole bunch of news for us to cover. So we'll see what's coming, what comes down the pipe. We'll see what, uh, what the prosecution has in store. And we will see what curveballs are thrown our way in this wild and wacky case of Jeffrey Epstein and his criminal enterprise. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. All right, everybody, I'll be back later on. I hope you all have a fantastic night. Call 1-888-FARMERS to switch, and you could save an average of $470 on your auto insurance. That's a lot of money in just a few minutes. With savings like that, you could be lounging on an impractical amount of ornate and overpriced throw pillows you bought for your couch. But you won't, because you're better with money than that. That's why you're calling us in the first place. Call 1-888-FARMERS to get a quote today. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Based on average nationwide annual savings survey data, July to December 2020. Underwritten by Farmers Trucker Fire Insurance. Exchanges are affiliate. Products not available in every state. You need a fast, reliable network. So get fast internet from Comcast Business. And add Comcast Business Security Edge. It helps block threats. Plus, we have 24-7 support. Bounce forward with Comcast Business. Get started with a great offer from Comcast Business. Call for restrictions and complete details.